purposes. And we've been on a journey uh, impacting lives, uh, creating what I call champions for life. We've been connecting, educating, and bringing restoration uh, to our community, first through Bethel International Christian Fellowship. Then we spent about, I want to say, seven to eight years uh, being trained through none other than San Antonio Fighting Back, Inc., uh, Linda Tippins, Eva Watts, Willie Mitchell took us up under their wing and mm. said, if you all want to mm. uh, enhance the community mm. work that you're already doing, then we would love to uh, take you under our wings and train you so that you have an effectiveness and that you have a, a broader knowledge base of how to effectively run a community-based nonprofit organization. Uh, so once we connected with them, we established the Bethel Community Development Corporation. And it is through that entity, its own separate 501c3, that we have established several community works. Uh, the first being Girl Worth Mentoring, where we work with uh, Texas um, Juvenile System. Going into the system, uh, the juvenile uh, jail system, uh, mentoring young girls upon their release. These girls were probably uh, 12 to 17 years of age and in order to reduce the recidivism rate of them returning, uh, Girl Worth Mentoring was the first program of its kind that had been allowed to come into the system to teach them principles of self-esteem and life skills and anger management and how to pick uh, better friends so that upon their release they're not going back. Uh, after that we had an incredible opportunity to work with Beat AIDS, uh, Michelle Durham, mm. uh, because our lives had been per personally affected by HIV AIDS, both of us having lost family members within one year of one another to this epidemic. So we got involved with Faith in Action, which sole focus was to get faith-based uh, organizations. And when we hear, when you hear that term faith-based, I want to make it clear that we are talking about churches. Uh, we're not just talking about faith entities arising, but we're actually saying churches who get involved in the community. And you know, Elder Lockhart, that when a tragedy hits our community, our nation, our city, our state, our world, it is often the, the hands and the feet of the saints of God who go in and administer aid and administer help. Uh, so the ministry that my husband started, he has always um, had a heart for the broken, as most pastors do, but beyond just preaching from the pages of scripture, we've always had our hands in the community, whether we were feeding, uh, clothing, uh, having um, hope for the hungry, food drives, uh, giving away toys at Christmas. We have always been known to do what we do in the community. So this is not something we just picked up to do uh, because there are monies available from uh, the Office of Faith-Based Initiative out of Washington, but really so that we could really impact the community because people know what you say, but they always remember what you do. You know, it's amazing that you, that you, that you said so many of our, in our churches today, are affected one way or another. Many people are hurting in the church, and many churches don't have the the, the skills, the know-how to be able to help them. But you and your husband have set out to learn skills, to be able to, and not only just you've been able, but you've been able to connect with organizations and others to be able to, uh, to reach and cover all areas. So San Antonio, San Antonio, this is something, she is someone that you need to get in touch with because she's not trying, now, you know, one of the things that I will say, so many times, well, they're trying to take members. It's not about taking members. It's, yeah. a, it's about helping one another. Yeah. You know, the Word of God even tells us that, um, you know, talks about come together. Mm -hmm. You know, where there's unity, there's strength. 
And we need that strength in our community to build, to encourage one another. It's not, we're not concerned about Baptists, we're not concerned about Methodists, Episcopalian, Church of God in Christ. We're concerned about the body of Christ. Yeah, and need and suffering do not have a face or a gender or an ethnic background. Need and suffering is something that's just part of the human condition. And I think when President Bush in 96, uh, one of the legacies that he left uh, when he left the office of president was the Office of Faith-Based Initiative, which then gave uh, churches and ministries an opportunity to continue to do the work, but to also uh, then begin to apply for federal funding to uh, keep their programs and the coalition work that they were doing uh, going on within the community, but now have a little bit of uh, financial help uh, to accompany the work that they're doing. Uh, you mentioned uh, another key point that I, I think will never change, and that is the fact when you are reaching out into the community that there is a fear and a misnomer that uh, you're taking members from another church or that you're just doing it because you want to grow your church. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you firsthand that when you are servicing the community, that there, there are few people that you feed, clothe, and provide uh, resources to that to come back around and join your church and become viable members. So that is, is, is not the motive for which we do what we do because, again, uh, th th that's not what we even see in Scripture. Uh, when Jesus was servicing and feeding and clothing and casting out demons and bringing healing among people, uh, there were a few occasions when he would say, come and follow me, but that was not his motive. His motive was to manifest the works of his Father, and that's what we're doing. We're just simply manifesting the work of our Father through community engagement, through touching lives beyond telling them to come. Instead of saying, you come, we have chosen to go. Uh, and as a result of that, we've received funding uh, at the local level. We have received funding at the state level, and our newest venture is the Drug-Free Community Grant that we have received. We were awarded that, and this is a huge grant because um, it is a t five to ten year funding where we really get to spend uh, five to ten years focusing on primarily youth and collaborating with other entities within the community, such as civic organizations, health organizations, mental health organizations, um, uh, Prince uh, schools, uh, the police department. And that is exciting because Drug Free Communities uh, knows that in order to really change a a, a, a dynamic within the community, then it's not going to be just a one-year funding to get that done. It's going to take some years to dig the groundwork, to establish the relationships, and to make known that your coalition even exists for the purposes of, of changing uh, drug addiction and drug use in our community. So Bethel Prevention Coalition, again, is our newest uh, work, and it is funded through the Drug-Free Community Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Association. And we have been plowing the field with excitement and seeing change and, and, and just, uh, just really the, those who have chosen to partner with us, they have a serious heart and a serious mind about doing the work. You know, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith, we're talking about faith space, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Many of you that are listening right now, you've been praying. You've been asking God, where can I go? Where can I take my children? What can I do? My husband needs help. I need help. Well, she's here right now. Can you leave with us uh, a phone number? Uh, we can be reached. Uh, the Bethel Prevention Coalition can be reached at uh, area code 210 six five one three 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 one uh you can also visit the website at www dot bethel b e t h e l community sa dot org and i want to say that if uh there are those of you who are listening out in radio land 
who are interested in, in, in partnering with us, uh, then we are certainly open to adding to the coalition. We need other hands, other feet, other voices, other minds, other creative ideas of how we can put to flight this epidemic in our community that nobody's talking about. Nobody's talking about it. So the other thing that we have coming up October 17th is a drug-free community youth uh, faith-based summit. And this is where we will gather pastors from across the s different sectors of the city to meet us over at the San Antonio Area Foundation from 10 a.m. to 2, uh, from, I'm sorry, from 10 to 12, uh, so that we can talk about what we can do as, as pastors in the city, as apostles, as prophets. We have this revelation about his word, but do we have a revelation that can put out substance abuse among our youth? The, the rates of uh, our youth using substances are horrific. I'll have to come back at another time and give you some stats on that. Uh, the marijuana use, the e-cigarette usage, so it's a lot of uh, that going on that's really hampering. We always talk about we want agents of change, but if, if our youth are getting stumped because of these addictions and these onset drugs, then it stifles their ability and their growth to go and be the best human beings that they can be. And as pastors, we counsel people all the time who come in, my son's addicted, my daughter's addicted, my husband's addicted. And I believe as, as faith-based uh, people, as Christians, as church folk, as pastors, the least we could do is provide information about prevention and awareness. We can set up resource centers in our tables and we can come and reason together, as the Bible says, come and reason together about how the greatest people walking on the face of the earth, that's us, the people of God, who are called by his name. We've been delivered from darkness. We've been delivered from shame. We know what breaking bondages and being set free because we were once captive. We know this life better than anybody, but the other powerful thing about us is faith-based. We have supernatural angelic help that will help us really break the bondages of substance abuse among our youth. And that is what I'm excited about, that not only, as you stated earlier, we go and we get the knowledge and we do what Daniel did. The Bible says Daniel was knowledgeable in all things. He didn't confine himself just to scripture. And when I look in the Bible, I love how God put right smack in the middle of the Bible, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs deals only with the human condition, how you talk to people, how you respond to people, how you, how you um, go in and out before great men and great women, how you treat people who don't have nothing to give you. And I like that because that is the balance that our faith gets to balance out because we do know that in unjust balance is an abomination to God. And I just believe that if, if, if you are looking for ministry, people are looking for ministry. Everybody want to be in the pulpit <laughs> preaching. Everybody wants to have a conference and everybody wants to do. Everybody's not called to that. Right. But you certainly are called to lock in and partner with an organization such as Bethel Prevention Coalition and, and really come and make an impact. Your testimony, the Bible says we overcome by the uh, blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The blood part is done. How is your testimony working to benefit and bless someone else? So even aspects of, of that, can we can, again, come together, create a synergistic energy that will really penetrate our community and put out this spirit of pharmacia, which is taken over our children in San Antonio. I like that word energy coming together reasoning together you know the word also tells us that my people are destroyed because of the lack, the of, lack knowledge. of knowledge there's so much that is needed I work in um with the prison system yeah. and one of the things that I realize is that our young people don't know somewhere they got lost in the mix mm -hmm. I sat in court and I listened to a judge to give a young man a teenager an opportunity to go out mm -hmm. Get connected with an organization that's moving positive wow. or go back to jail. Mm. He said, 
You'll be released from the jail at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'll give you an opportunity to find you a job, but you must be back in the jail mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock. The young man stopped and said, I'll stay in jail. Oh my God. His grandmother was there, 80-something years old. The judge called, what's wrong with your son? Mm -hmm. I'm saying all of this because, listening audience, we don't have to go to the court system. There's help available for you, for your children. Many people, I, I was at the dentist's office. Young lady was there in her 70s. She just got out of prison, but she was looking for help, looking for a direction to go. The direction is, this is one of the directions that can be able to help you. It's not an organization outside of the church. It's in the church. It's in the body of Christ. Pastors, members, mm -hmm. connect. Connect with something that's real. You don't have to go out of town. You don't have to go to the hospital. But we know that in the body of Christ, there is a hospital. And, and we do have monthly coalition meetings uh, where we come together for about an hour and a half to talk about uh, things that we'd like to implement within the community, things we'd like to implement uh, among the faith-based community. Uh, one of the things that we will be working on uh, this week, um, uh, Councilman Chris Medina uh, from District 7 uh, is going before council in August to talk about a, a ban on these e-cigarettes mm. for minors mm -hmm. because the four substances that we are working with with drug-free communities are prescription drugs, tobacco, marijuana, and alcohol. And there has been an emergence of these e-cigarettes because they come in uh, different liquid forms and different liquid flavors. And uh, Councilman Medina, as we believe that if tobacco use is restricted, if regular cigarette use is restricted uh, from, from minors, then so shall it be with the e-cigarettes. And we are partnering with Councilman Medina to go and, and, and prayerfully and hopefully have this put on the docket. Uh, for the city of San Antonio that there'll be a restriction and a ban use on e-cigarettes for our youth. You know, one of the things that I can always say, as long as I've known you, one thing that you and your husband do is ask the Lord to order your steps. Yes. San Antonio and Global listeners coming up right now. We're going to be right back right after this, but here right now is GM. <laughs> 